A bunch of do-it-yourself and professional makers work really hard to make available several different kinds of speakers. They can have different size, color, power, sound quality, and many other features that can differentiate them. Hmm, you may be wondering, why am I watching a video of a coffee table and listening about speakers? Well, that's because it's not just a regular coffee table. In this video, I will show you how I exploited different ways to use sound exciters and build at home an amazing speaker with really cool features, such as 360 degree sound, Bluetooth connection, and with a different shape than any speaker that you have ever seen. Before we proceed, don't forget that you can get all the plans to build a speaker just like the one that I will show you. The link for that is in the video description. Follow this channel and hit the like button to more content like this one. Well, let me share a little bit the idea behind this project. Speakers usually try to replicate the sound emitted by some instrument or vocal cords. The main difference between a speaker and a piano for an example is that a speaker uses a relatively small area of some kind of fabric or sometimes paper or composite to replicate the sound that originally is generated in a higher area that's usually made of wood or metal. Speakers also tend to make the sound flow in one major direction, and instruments usually tend to spread the sound around its own body. One really cool way to make sound, besides using a regular speaker, is using sound exciters. These devices are really small when compared with regular speakers and produce sound being attached to some surface and vibrating it. Several different makers use exciters to make really cool and good quality sound systems. Usually flat wood panels are used to make it, but different kinds of materials can also be used. Taking that in consideration, the main idea here was to replicate the way an instrument makes sound using exciters and exploring different wood shapes. For that, the plan was to use a 360 degree surface that resonates or vibrates as an instrument does and spreads the sound around it. That would make a nice speaker for an indoor use where everybody around it would listen to a very similar audio independently where they are positioned. Well, starting the building process, the first thing to do is to make the mold that will let the wood have the round shape that I was looking for. To make it, I used two MDF boards and cut a circle in it using a trimmer and a jig. Luckily, the trimmer that I have already came with this jig that allows me to cut circles. I just had to glue a wood piece to cut a higher radius that it originally could do. If your trimmer doesn't come with a jig, you can easily make one with a thin wood board. I used only two MDF boards and joined them with some wood pieces to make it the same width of the balsa planks that were used to compose the central round piece that I will call here in this video central ring. And with that the inner mold is done. To help me to put some pressure on the wood that I would like to shape, I used the MDF wood that was left from the outside of the circles that I cut before and joined them with the same method that I showed you. But this time, I added a hinge to one side and the other one I planned to close using a couple of clamps. To not hurt the wood, I glued one layer of foam inside of each mold. Now that the mold is ready, I could bend the wood planks and hold it with the round shape that I wanted to. I used balsa wood for this round shape that will vibrate and produce sound. In the research that I made previously, it showed to be a good material to do it. I also researched several different methods to bend wood. Most of them use water or a solution of ammonium hydroxide and water, and a couple of them use some heat source to make the wood easier to bend. In this case, I ended up using only hot water and spreading it with a piece of cloth over the balsa wood. It showed to be enough to get the desired shape that I needed. After soaking it on both sides, I just moved it to the mold and, taking care to not hurt the wood, I held it in place in the mold that I made before. To secure everything tight, I clamped the mold as I planned. 
After it was clamped together, I let it sit for 24 hours. After this time, I assumed that everything was dry enough, and it was. So I removed the balsa wood from the mold. As it will have two layers, I had to do another one following the same procedure as I did before. When the two layers of wood were done, I glued it together with wood glue, removed the internal EVA layer to give the mold some space and put it back into the mold. When it was done, the last thing to do was to glue some wood supports into the internal side of it. That will help to suspend this part that will vibrate to produce the sound, avoiding it to get in contact with the rest of the structure. Now that the central ring is done, we need to make the top and the bottom part of the sound system. To make it, I used two pine boards. I bought it pre-cut with a round shape, but it was not the diameter that I needed, so I had to cut it using the trimming the jig again. I did it following the same procedure for the wood mold. It's quite a time consuming process and make a lot of dust. Be careful with your eyes and use some proper mask if you are going to do the same process at home. I proceeded to trim the internal edges of the boards for, later, put the central ring in place and rounded the external edges to give it a good finishing. To trim the internal edges, I used a gadget that also came with the trimmer that I purchased that really helped me with this step. As the research about sound exciters that I did showed me that they are not so good at producing sound in lower frequencies, I projected a flat panel to be added at the bottom of the speaker to help it to enhance its bass performance. As the bottom part will hold the bass exciter, I covered the under part of it using the trimmer and a homemade jig with a spare board. This way, the best panel would be in the same level as the under surface, giving it a nice finishing. I also had to add a hole into the bottom part where the bass exciter would be. As the last step, I carved some space for the electronics controls and the power input part. Now that the top and the bottom part are done, a good sand was necessary to remove any imperfections of the wood. It will help in the further painting to give a really smooth look into the speaker. To give the necessary space to the central ring seat in place, I had to cut four pieces of square profile pine wood to make the internal structure. The idea here was to screw it in place beginning for the top part. I used these 90 degrees joints so I could avoid any screw showing up into the top board. To fix it into the bottom board, I simply screw it through it. To the bottom, I did not use any glue, so when necessary, I can access the internal components for maintenance purposes. To make the legs of the sound system, I bought this pre-shaped pine coffee table legs. It ended up being a nice fit to it. To put it in place, I just had to screw it into the bottom board. The painting process was quite simple. I just selected a good wood varnish and followed the manufacturer instructions to get a good surface finishing. I painted the internal and external parts of the sound system to protect it against any possible moisture. The next thing to do was fixing the central ring into the top part. I had initially planned to make a magnetic suspension, but clearly I superestimated my construction capacity and in the end I just decided to suspend it using a couple of cotton ropes. As I showed before, I added a bottom flat panel to enhance the best performance of the sound system. It was made with the same balsa wood that the central ring used and I just used the same method to suspend it, but this time into the bottom part. Now that the structure is done, I put all the electronics and exciters in place. I used some hot glue to attach the amplifiers that I used for this project into the bottom board and I also had an input power soldered to it, so I can connect the power supply to the system. The exciters were glued in place using double side tape that came with them. Finally, with everything in place, I could do the assembly of the sound system. Uh, it was basically consisted in just screwing the top board into the bottom board. The most complicated thing here was the wiring, uh, with the reduced space to do it. And for everyone that watched until here, besides thank you, now it's time to test it. Unfortunately, 
I don't have a studio and a professional equipment to do it. But I did my best with the equipment that I have. The main idea here was to compare the sound of it with another speaker that I built in a previous project and a mini commercial speaker. Hope you enjoy it. Well, how you could see, of course the sound system has much room for improvements, but I'm pretty happy with the results that I got here. Now you may be thinking, why didn't this guy just buy a simple stereo and get the same result? Well, I may ask you, where would be the fun in that? I hope I could inspire some of you during this building process. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this one. See you in the next video.